Since the 1990s, the cartel has made the lives of hundreds of families a never-ending hell. From random kidnappings to satanic sacrifices and wedding homicides, the cartel shows absolutely no mercy when it comes to eliminating their target. In recent years, a trend has emerged amongst the new generation of cartel members that involve wearing Halloween masks during their attacks. Whether the uprise in the need to wear these specific designs derived from the 2016 social media clown phenomenon, or if it's merely an homage to the maniacal clowns that have come before their time is anyone's guess, the point is that the cartel likes anonymity and invoking fear into their victims, even beyond the point of what is considered necessary as a continuous way to torture their target. And a perfect example or case of this is Francisco Rafael Arellano. Francisco Rafael Arellano was celebrating his 64th birthday alongside his wife, children, and friends at Ocean House, a beachfront banquet hall owned in Los Cabos, Mexico on October 18, 2013. There were about 80 to 100 people in attendance at the party, including prominent businessmen, politicians, celebrities, and sports figures. At around 8 p.m., a black-colored SUV entered the private property and parked near the entrance of the ballroom. According to eyewitness reports, two men were sitting in the front and two men were seated in the back. One of the men had on a clown mask and descended from the vehicle and headed towards the door that led into the kitchen. Once inside the ballroom, the man in the clown mask identified Francisco Rafael at the center of the room and began to walk towards him. When the clown was about three feet away from his target, he pulled out a pistol from his costume and shot him point blank in the head and then several times more as Francisco fell to the ground. Francisco was killed instantly in front of his entire room of guests, and as the former drug lord laid lifeless near the entrance, the assassin in the clown mask ran through a rear exit while the attendees yelled, fell to the ground, and hid underneath the tables. Four more shots were heard outside the ballroom shortly after the attack, and according to eyewitnesses, the man in the clown mask began shooting outside the corridor to scare off one of Francisco Rafael's sons. The suspect then fled the crime scene in a black-colored SUV and headed towards the highway. An attendee at the party and the murder scene uploaded a one-minute video on YouTube showing the scene before Francisco Rafael was killed. The video starts with a vocalist singing a song alongside a mariachi group. As the film progresses, the camera turns to the side and shows the wife of Francisco Rafael. Towards the last seconds of the video, a bald-looking man passes through the back of the tables in front of the camera and apparently gives a hand signal to the assassin before walking away. Then, a man dressed as a clown, the presumed assassin, passes through the crowd and heads towards Francisco Rafael. Seconds later, a shot is heard and most of the invitees were not aware of what was happening at the time as the music continued. Shortly afterwards, four more shots are heard from the rear. Following the second round of shots, music is abruptly cut off and the invitees start screaming. The video only captured a few seconds after the last four shots before concluding. One of the suspects reportedly made three phone calls during the party and sent several text messages. Investigators believe that the man was possibly communicating with the assassin. The video allowed the authorities to identify the physical characteristics of the assassin, including his skin color, approximate height, and the color of his clothing. The authorities began investigating whether any purchases were made in custom or fabric stores in the area that might lead them to the suspects. The major intention of attacking the drug lords in these instances is to disarm the main source of power or leader within a group. An extremely powerful example of a criminal organization is the Juana cartel, which was one of the most influential drug gangs in Mexico until it was gradually weakened by the capture of several of its leading members during the previous decade. The killings demonstrated a new type of depravity and recklessness when it comes to organized crime, and the events that would follow in the upcoming years would only make the fears of these mass cartel members grow even bigger. Many groups use these disguises to threaten rival gang members off of their territory. In the case of Francisco Rafael Arellano Felix, his demise had more to do with his power, influence, and history. Francisco Rafael Ariano Felix was born on October 24, 1949, and was known as a Mexican drug lord and former leader of the Tijuana cartel. He was the oldest of seven brothers and headed the criminal organization in the early 1990s. When he took control of the organization in the early 1990s, tensions with the rival Sinaloa cartel prompted violent attacks and slayings from both ends. In December 1989, Francisco Rafael ordered his gunmen to decimate the Machi Ramirez, a once prominent crime family that controlled the drug trade in Tijuana prior to Francisco's arrival. Once established in Tijuana, the Francisco Rafael clan forged important relations with some of the most prominent families in the region. El Chapo Guzman sent Armando Lopez, also known as El Rayo, one of his most trusted men to speak with the Francisco Rafael clan in Tijuana. Before he had a chance to speak face to face with them, Lopez was killed by Ramon, one of Francisco's accomplices, and the corpse was disposed in the outskirts of the city and the Tijuana cartel ordered a hit on the remaining family members of the Lopez family to prevent retaliation. Two years later, Ramon killed another Sinaloa cartel associate, Rigoberto Campos Salcido, 
also known as El Rigo, prompting even more intense conflicts with the rival cartel. In September 1992, the Tijuana cartel ordered another hit against their rivals, and the rivalry reached its peak on May 24, 1993 when gunmen affiliated with the Tijuana cartel attempted to kill El Chapo Guzman in the Guadalajara International Airport. In the raging and confusing fire, gunmen shot a luxurious vehicle thought to hold Guzman. However, amongst those aboard were Roman Catholic Cardinal Juan Jesus Posadas Ocampo, who was killed at the scene, along with six other civilians. El Chapo was able to successfully escape the assassination attempt by leaving in a taxi. On December 4, 1993, Francisco Rafael was arrested by the Federal Judicial Police in Tijuana for charges on drug trafficking and illegal use of weaponry under Mexican law. He was sentenced to 10 years and 3 months and imprisoned at the Federal Social Readaptation Center No. 1, a maximum security prison in the state of Mexico. Unlike his brothers who eventually led the Tijuana cartel and made it one of the most leading and most violent drug trafficking organizations in Mexico during the 1990s, Francisco Rafael was not a key player in the cartel's uprising. His arrest in 1993 came before the family's downfall and the arrest or deaths of his brothers. In the Tijuana cartel, his task was to coordinate the buying and selling of narcotics to the United States. On June 2, 2003, United States authorities requested the Mexican government to extradite Francisco Rafael. A Mexican federal judge approved the request the following year, but the drug lord was not extradited to the United States until September 16, 2006. He was flown from Matamoros, Tamaulipas via helicopter and handed over to U.S. authorities in a prison in Brownsville, Texas after a 10-year sentence in Mexico. He was then transferred back to the state of California pending federal charges on drug trafficking. In October 2007, Francisco Rafael was sentenced to six years in prison with the possibility of parole in four months given the time he had already served in prison. Though sentenced to six years, Francisco Rafael was released on March 4, 2008 after serving only a year and five months. He moved to Mazatlan before relocating to Los Cabos, a resort town in the Baja California Peninsula. He lived there with his wife in an upper middle class neighborhood on a hill with a view towards the Arco de Los Cabos. Instead of his actual name, Francisco Rafael went by his pseudonym, Maro Vasquez, and posed as a businessman, avid motorcyclist, and music producer. It was there that Francisco Rafael was celebrating his 64th birthday alongside his wife, children, and friends at Ocean House. After Francisco Rafael's assassination, the first to arrive at the crime scene were the municipal authorities of Los Cabos, followed by the Mexican armed forces and the federal and state police forces. Upon the arrival of the authorities, Francisco Rafael's wife informed them of the former drug lord's identity. The autopsy revealed that Francisco Rafael died of several traumatic brain injuries from shot in the thorax and head with an FN57 pistol. On October 19, 2013, the Baja California Sur State Police escorted the body of Francisco Rafael and then it was shipped by boat to his home state of Sinaloa. It was initially reported by the media that his corpse was to be cremated in Mazalan. However, his remains were taken to the city of Los Mochis for cremation on October 20, 2013. Roughly 24 hours after the death of Francisco Rafael, the Mexican Federal Police arrested Manuel Galindo, alias El Caballo, a founder of the Tijuana cartel and a high-ranking leader and money launderer who had been a fugitive for more than 20 years in Mexico City. It is unknown who notified the authorities of his whereabouts, but they allege that they were either notified by a rival gang or by members of the Arellano Felix clan. Shortly after the murder of Francisco Rafael, the police interrogated his family and several of the party invitees. The motives behind the murder case are officially unknown, but Mexican authorities believe that given the circumstances and the players involved, the suspect motives possibly stem from unpaid old debts and old retributions. The authorities are working with two separate lines of investigations. The first line alleges that Francisco Rafael was killed by members of the Beltran Leva Cartel, a drug trafficking organization that fights for the control of the smuggling of routes in the Baja California Peninsula against the Sinaloa Cartel. The second line alleges that Francisco Rafael was killed by members of the Sinaloa Cartel, specifically on orders of El Chapo Guzman, the cartel's leader. El Chapo was nearly captured by the Mexican Federal Police in Los Cabos in March 2012 after an anonymous call informed the DEA that the drug lord was possibly hiding in three properties. Investigators allege that Francisco Rafael, although he was no longer involved in organized crime, might have tipped the authorities to El Chapo's whereabouts and incurred El Chapo's wrath. They also believe that the attack might have been carried out by a local drug dealing group in Los Cabos. The main suspect of this alleged attack is a man named Javier Lopez Rivera. In the line of this investigation, the authorities believe that the drug dealer sent two of his men to pick up the assassin who arrived from Sinaloa at Los Cabos International Airport. According to the Mexican authorities, the murder plot was possibly carried out with the collaboration of the Tijuana cartel because no security measures were taken during the party and because the entrances were open to the public and they are usually typically closed for private events. The investigation was further complicated by the fact that many of the invitees, fearing for their lives, fed from the scene when Francisco Rafael was killed by the clown. Out of the 80 to 100 attendees, only 20 of them stayed, many of them family members and employees of the banquet hall. 
When the authorities interrogated those who stayed and asked them whether they had recognized the assassin or any other physical features, none of them were able to give any details. Some stated that they didn't pay enough attention to the clown when he entered the crime scene, while others stated that they didn't even recall exactly what the clown was wearing, remembering only that the assassin was wearing a blue striped or purple shirt, a multicolored wig, and a red clown nose.